Hey guys, Gino Calor with Ground Radio National Training. And on this week's grid tip, I want to talk about uh, compliance training versus non-compliance training. You know, we're seeing more and more in the industry, uh, especially with a lot of guys who are um, tactical knife practitioners, um, and even things having to do with hand-to-hand -hand and dynamic and strategic hand-to-hand -hand combat, um, a lot of compliance training uh, for two very basic principles. A, it's easy, and B, it looks cool and it looks sexy. That's pretty much what it boils down to. Is there something fundamentally sound about compliance training when you are first learning um, how to do certain patterns, certain movements, certain blocks, certain strikes? Absolutely. But when that becomes your bread and butter and your training, um, that actually becomes a massive handicap. All right, so for example, I'm gonna use Ryan here today um, for a brief example, right? So let's say Ryan and I, we are practicing what to do if somebody were to throw a right straight, right? That's my face. So let's say that hand comes out, all right, and I'm right here and I say, okay, so if I was carrying a blade or even if I was empty handed, this is what I would do. All right, some sort of movement like that. Well, it looks cool, it looks fast, but in reality, what's gonna happen? That hand is out, right? And if I go to come and do all this, there's gonna be a reaction. We're gonna lock up, something's gonna happen. But in my mind, in the academy or the dojo, whatever it is that you train, you're conditioning yourself and your muscle memory to be able to do certain things when in reality you're not going to be able to. So you're setting yourself up for failure and you're doing a conditioning pattern and process that's actually handicapping your ability to properly defend yourself and loved ones with you. So our recommendation is this, if you are going to learn things that have to do with hand-to-hand -hand principles, even blade principles, improvised weapons, edge and impact weapons, whatever the case is, make sure you are incorporating a heavy, heavy dose of non-compliant training. Right, you've got to be able to know what it feels like when someone is reacting towards you. You can call it sparring, you can call it getting on the ground and grappling and rolling, whatever the case is, but you've got to be able to expose yourself to having people react in a live fashion. Again, if I'm used to doing all this kind of stuff with no reaction versus him coming in and having a reaction, whole different ballgame, okay? Gina Calor, Ground Radio National Training, guys. Stay tuned for the next grit tip.